Hi everyone, thank you for joining me today here at Watercolors with Jaylene. Now we are kicking it into high gear with the holiday season right around the corner, so I thought maybe we could make a couple of really cute greeting cards and I'll walk you through the process. Before we get started, I would like to ask you to go ahead and subscribe to my YouTube channel if you haven't done so already. Hit the like button if you enjoy this video and don't forget about hitting the bell so that you'll be notified when I do come up with a, another new video. So to go over the supply list very quickly, I do have uh, my standard or stock greeting cards and those measure five and a half by four inches. They do come with a matching envelope. I just get those at my local craft store. And then the solid background color paper measures four and a half inches by three and a half inches. And I just use my paper cutter, cut those down from a, a standard eight and a half by 11 piece of paper. And then of course my watercolor papers that are, those measure three and three quarters by two and three quarters. And I take, for those I actually buy a uh, poster size piece of watercolor paper. It's the Arches 140, uh, I believe it's 140 weight um, cold press. And so I just fold it and rip it, fold, and then fold it and rip it, and I keep folding and ripping it until I get down to these small um, three and three quarter by two and three quarter sizes. And I believe you get like 64 of the small squares or small rectangles out of one poster size board. So that gives you an idea how I go about doing that. Now I also have my Kiritake paints and here is the color chart that I created for my paints. And then I do have my metallic paints. I'll be using the bronze color today. And I have my uh, number eight round brush. And then a couple of the uh, brush markers that I'll be using. And I'll just be using a blue one to go with the blue uh, bulb and then a pink one to go with the pink and red bulb and so let me set these aside these are the finished product I wanted to give you an idea of what they will look like when we're finished and another thing that I do have is my double-sided um, tape to to put the cards together okay and then I will also be using this is the, the, the one last thing I apologize so I will be using this small little um, I'm not even sure what this is. It's just a little glass, maybe, I don't know, cordials or something. But the reason that I'm using this is because I do like the size of this. And this is one and three quarter inch in diameter. So that's, that's the purpose of this. If you have, I don't know, maybe a small little jar or lid to something that will work just as well. Or if you're good at drawing circles, that's fine too. But there's a fun little um, way to do this that's very common. And you've probably seen the whole process a million times on you know various videos and it's, it's just fun to do. So for, we're gonna start with the, the red. And to get started with that, uh, what I want to do is take a little spray bottle and I just like to mist the colors to you know kind of get those activated and so we'll get those going so I, I did some reds and pinks and then a little bit of an orange and a yellow and then for the blue bulbs I'm going to be using um, a couple different shades of the blue and then I'll also be using a yellow with that so I just like to get those you know misted down and ready to go so I'm going to take my little uh, glass, my little cordials glass, and I'm going to start with, this is a, the name of it in this particular set is Rose Matter, M-A-D-D-E-R. And we just want to put a little bit of paint around the edges. And it doesn't have to be perfect. You know, nothing I do is perfect. That's why it's so fun. Okay, so now that I have that, uh, about three quarters of the way up on the paper in the center. I'm going to just put this down and let it sit there for half a second, pull it up, and there is the paint. And the reason that I like to do that, well, there's a couple reasons, because it's just fun, um, you know, actually getting the paint all to uh, blend together. So I'm putting some water in the middle and then I'm going to get a lot more water on my brush and working from the inside towards the 
outer rim, we go in and meet up with the paint. And in doing this, and I just dunked into the water again. So really all I'm doing is dunking into the water because we want this paint to blend. And that's the fun part of doing it with the glass, the glass or whatever object you are using, okay? So we have the, uh, we have all of the middle of this, you know, with a lot of water in there. So I just grabbed some more of the paint, a lot of paint and a lot of water on my brush and I'm gonna bring it around. And what we want to do is create a look with the various, uh, I'm gonna be using two shades of the reds, a, a darker shade and then also this one. And so we just kind of want to create almost like a marble effect, if you will. You know, we, there's no, no real look that we need to achieve, just whatever you want to do, really. So now I'm grabbing some of the darker, which is, this, this is just a dark, deep uh, rose color. And we're gonna let this whoosh around a little bit. And we do want a lot of water on here so that these colors can gradually take their time and just uh, melt together, blend very nicely. Now I'm gonna clean my brush off a little bit and grab some yellow. So I want to dab in some yellow also. So, you know, in terms of thinking of a, a Christmas bulb, the yellow, you know, as it's hanging on the tree and it's reflecting some of the little twinkle lights, um, that's, that's the whole object of the yellow in here is for just a little bit of a twinkle, okay? So we have that. And keep in mind, with watercolors, as they dry, they do have a tendency to get a little bit lighter. So while these do look very deep and dark, it will lighten up just a little bit as it dries. Now, I'm going to grab some of the, uh, the rose matter. And then down below, I just want to do a small circle. And this is just going to be a little bobble, basically, hanging off the bottom part of the... Um, the Christmas ball. Okay, so I have that. And now I'm going to be grabbing some of my bronze, the metallic. And if you don't have the metallics, just use a bright yellow or something, uh, you know, anything to make it look like you have some little baubles and gems hanging down. And I want to put quite a few hanging here, make it nice and long and dramatic, right? Okay, so we have this one completed. So what we're gonna to wanna to do is set this aside and let this dry 100%. We don't want any of it to be at, wet at all. And so I'm gonna set this one aside and then I'll grab another uh, little square of paper and we're going to work on the blue one next. So basically we're gonna go through the same process and um, I'm using, this. the name of this is turquoise green. It's just a nice deep, rich blue, bluish green. And if there's other colors that you really like that you would like to use instead, you know, some beautiful greens, make some green bulbs or, you know, whatever works for you, you do you. Okay, so now that I have that uh, painted, the rim of it, I'm gonna do the same thing three quarters of the way up and just kind of eyeball, you know, the center from side to side. And there we have that. So now I can put my glass aside, I'm done with that. So the same thing with a lot of water on my brush, I just want to kind of get um, some water into the middle of this. So when we do work the brush towards the outside, It will blend nicely, gradually. And the glass really makes it perfect. Um, I'm not always so great at making perfect circles. So that helps, but it's just kind of fun doing it that way also, you know. Okay, so we have that. Now, with a lot of water, once again, on my brush, I'm going to grab some more of this turquoise green 
and once again go along the edges and this design might be a little bit different than the last one and with this I'm really not even worried about you know a lot of times we want to make sure that there is a, a highlighted area um, for reflection but I'm not even worrying about that with this okay so now I'm grabbing some of the I think it's pronounced malachite I'm not sure it's just a very creamy uh, bluish green color it's absolutely gorgeous and we're going to work this into a few different areas and let it blend very nicely with the other color as well okay so let me grab just a little bit more get I'm just kind of dabbing it into those areas as you can see so now I do want to grab some more of the yellow and get some of the yellow in this and this is just really my preference to add the yellow if you don't want to you definitely don't have to I just think that yellow kind of you know adds a brightness to just about any design out there okay so I think we're good with that and now I'm going to go back and with some of that the darker turquoise which this is a very bold and deep beautiful color so I'm going to do the same thing add a bobble here and once again you know with these bobbles if you wanted to keep them all in a metallic you could do that um, if you wanted to do all of the little bobbles going down in in a color that's in the globe or the you know the ornament that's cool too this is just kind of how I chose to do it you know with the metallics you can just kind of dab them on okay so look at how cool that one is and as they uh, set and you know gradually dry and they continue to the colors continue to kind of melt together they it just becomes so beautiful so I'm going to set that one aside now for the sake of this video I actually have already completed um, two of these that are totally dry because that is very important as I mentioned before that you want them to be very very dry so with these two what I want to do is uh, let me just kind of set all of this aside because now we're going to put the cards together before we start to put any of the details on. So I do have, let me get that out of the way. I do have my double sided tape. And then for the background, um, as I had mentioned, you know, I do cut my, my uh, background solid colors into the um, four and a half by three and a half sizes. And so I do a lot of them ahead of time and I always have this nice little inventory. So I'm going to see, you know, kind of like, let me set this aside. Just kind of set that on there to see, you know, what color of, what shade of a blue I might want to use with this. I think that's a little too light. And I am kind of leaning towards that. I really like it. So I'm going to stick with that one. And then for the red one, uh, you know, the standard color for Christmas is red. One of the standard colors. So I really like that. Now, if you're into the whole Barbie thing, which I know is very popular this year, you may want to see, and see that one I already pre-did a border on it. Um, that's a little too, too pale. We need bright and light for Christmas, don't you agree? And with that one, I don't know, that's not working for me. Now, it depends on what colors you're using. The background color might be great for you, but I do think for this one, I'm going to stick with the red today, okay? I just kind of wanted to share that quick little process with you of, of how I do that. And I could sit there and go through, I don't know, many different colors, trying to figure out which one I really want to use or need to use. Okay, so I'm going to, um, this is a, this is just the basic card stock, as I had mentioned before. And then I did go ahead and stamp on the inside, making spirits bright. I have several different stamps that, uh, with sayings on them for whether it's the holidays or birthdays or what have you. And, uh, so I did go ahead and stamp that already just so I don't forget to do it towards the end. 
because that does happen. Okay, so I put a couple pieces of the double-sided tape on the back of this. And then, once again, I'm just kind of eyeballing this to put it in the middle there. And then we'll flip this whole thing over and put a couple more pieces of double-sided tape on here. You can see how quick and easy this is, and it's a lot of fun. Okay, so I'm just kind of eyeballing that one also. All right, so we have that one done. Let me grab another card, another blank card. Okay, so here's another blank card, and we're gonna do the same with the blue bulbs. Before starting this video today, I actually had created uh, a set of 12 of these cards, and it was a special order for one of my clients. Um, and I did them in probably three different colors. These two colors, and then I did put some with greens on there also. Okay, so now that's on there. Okay, now the fun begins. So I'm going to take my, uh, my brush marker, and these brush markers, if you don't have these, you can always use just regular markers or uh, whatever you might have, or you can go without if you want. I'm just kind of doing around these little bobbles coming down. I like to highlight those with the blue. And the reason that I do that is it's not really so much noticeable, but it does kind of turn the, the metallic bronze into like a bluish metallic bronze, if that makes any sense. It's very subtle. No, probably no one would really notice it except for me, but I think um, it really does do a lot. And so on this one, I'm using a pink. Now I do have a red one of these, but I thought pink would be just a little bit more subtle. And see how that really does change? Okay, so now the fun part this, and I didn't mention this in the beginning when I was going over my supplies list, but this is a, um, it's a glitter glue. And so with the red, what I want to do is just go around the edge of this. I always say with Christmas, you can't get too much glitter on anything. Okay, so just real quickly, I go around the edge and then I'm going to add a bit of a design on this, which is just some long stripes going down through. Okay. And uh, a real quick around that one. Now I'm not going to do anything with the other two. So I have that on there. And that's why I put the cards together first, you know, the, all of the layers because once I put the glitter glue on, that does take some time to dry. I would say probably, I don't know, maybe 15 to 20 minutes. And you don't want to put on too awfully thick uh, because then it does take even longer to dry. And it, it, the more you put on, the thicker you put it on isn't always the better. It's not gonna make it look any better, I should say. So now I'm going to use some silver uh, glitter glue. I also have iridescent glitter glue that I use on a lot of stuff. I don't know if I'm going to use it on this one, uh, but I did want to kind of point it out to you. So for just a little bit of a frame on the solid piece, um, I do want to use my silver. And it's just real quick, and once again, you know, it's just kind of eyeballing it, and it's not, there's no no scientific perfection little bit with any of this. We just throw it on there. And you can see where that kind of uh, made a little bit of a gap there, and that's fine. I'm gonna leave it like that. Okay, so there we go. We have that, and one thing I did forget to put on here real quick, which I can do it now, is just the string, because all bulbs need a string to hang from the tree, right? And uh, along with that, let me grab just a hint of that bronze color, which you don't have to do this. This is just a little detail that I do like to add, you know, the little thing that they attach to on top. Okay, so 
I will say this one is done and I'm going to set this aside and let that dry and let's bring down the blue one and actually um, before we start on all the fun glitter I'm going to do the same thing I'm going to draw my little strings and this is just a basic um, sharpie marker if you have like a ballpoint pen that you want to use that works just as well and then and you can see I just do a couple little dabs there all right so we have that completed so now for the glitter on this one I'm going to be using silver on the entire thing and for this one um, what I'm going to do is a little bit different of a design so I'm going to kind of trace right around here and then for a design on this one I just want to put a bunch of big glitter dots okay if you want to do lines you know you can choose whatever you, kind of design you want to put on on the bulbs a zigzag um, some bulbs have just lines at the bottom you know you you choose whatever you want I kind of like this and I like to make you know my blues and the uh, pinks and the greens I like to do different designs on all of them I don't want them all to look the same not that they all go to the same household because they don't but you know just to kind of I guess it's more for when I'm actually sitting here doing them I don't get bored doing the same identical thing on each one there look at how cute that is I just absolutely love this glitter stuff you know like I said for Christmas you can't get too much glitter on anything okay so now I'm going to do the same thing put just a little framing detail around the sol solid paper on this one and There we go. All right. Look at how cute that is and see how quick that was. Let me bring this one back out and be real careful not to smudge my, my glitter glue. So there are the two cards that we just did in just a few minutes, right? It doesn't take much time at all. Probably takes more time to let the paint dry and then the glitter glue dry than to put the card together and actually paint them. But they're a lot of fun. Come up with different designs, different colors. Um, and so that pretty much completes this and as I mentioned earlier if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel if you could go ahead and do that now I would really appreciate it it does help my channel grow and also hit the like button if you've enjoyed this video I do have some of the details uh, down in the description box below of some of the supplies and also uh, be sure to hit that bell so that you see when I put new post new videos and you won't miss any of them so thanks again for joining me today until next time ciao for now